Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, limitless ocean of sacrifice and endless seas of compassion and never ending struggle caused all of humanity, rather all of creation to be obsessed with him, to love him. This was a love that made stone speak. This was a love that caused tree trunks to speak and to weep. It was a love that moved trees from their places. It was a love that caused camels to weep when they saw him. And it was a love that humbled lions and made them stop in their tracks. And allow me to elaborate on each one of these five. We said that this was a love that made stone speak. Muslim narrates on the authority of Jabir ibn Samurah that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I know of a rock in Mecca that used to give me salam, greetings, before I became a messenger. He said, I know where that rock is at this moment in time. Imagine, before he became a messenger, a normal human being without prophethood or revelation, he would walk past a particular rock. That rock would say to him, Salaamu Alaikum, O Messenger of Allah. Love that caused stone to speak. Inanimate objects would continue making their voices heard in his presence. Abu Dhar, the companion, he said, I myself was present on a particular day when we were sat in a study circle with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in his hand were pebbles and then the pebbles began to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we heard the sounds of the pebbles speaking Abu Dhar said in that gathering was Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali and all of them heard the voice of the pebbles saying subhanallah alhamdulillah in the hand of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it was a love that caused rocks to speak. It was love that caused tree trunks to weep. Muslim narrates on the authority of Jabir ibn Abdullah that the Messenger وسلم, used to give the khutbah, the Friday sermon, next to a tree trunk. He would lean on it as he was delivering his sermon. And then a man from the Ansar, and in another narration, a woman from the Ansar, they said to the Prophet وسلم, shall we build for you a pulpit so that you can sit, rest, speak to the companions? He said, yeah, why not? So they built for him the pulpit. So now he was no longer next to the tree trunk. The very first sermon he gave, subhanAllah away from the tree trunk, he began to speak. The narrator Jabir, he said, the tree trunk began to scream. A scream that we all heard. And this narration has come to us from numerous chains of transmission because it was a public gathering when this happened. All of the companions, they heard this. It began to scream like a baby who was very displeased. So he came down from the pulpit. He went next to the tree trunk and he hugged it, subhanAllah. And he kept it there in his arms. The narrator said it began to moan and it began to inhale rapidly like a child does when his mother is calming him down. Subhanallah. And he stayed there until it quieted. And then he turned to the companions saying to them what that was all about. And he said to them, it was crying because it missed hearing the remembrance when it was standing, when I was standing beside it. In another narration, which a Darimi narrates, it adds to this narration and it said, he said, I swear by Allah who possesses my life. If I had not left my pulpit and hugged the tree, it would have continued crying all the way until the day of judgment because of grief and sorrow. Now that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa was no longer standing next to it. And so he instructed the companions to cut down the tree trunk and to bury it, as if to say that the grief it went through was so strong that the best place for it now would be six feet under, subhanAllah. Love that caused trees to weep, love that caused trees to move from their places. Jabir, he said, we were traveling with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam till we arrived at a valley that was so fragrant. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam needed to relieve himself, to respond to the call of nature. He said, and I was following him carrying a container of water. He looked around to find anything which he could cover himself with. He couldn't find anything. So he looked to the right side of the valley. He saw a tree by itself. And the other end of the valley, there was another tree. So he made his way to one of the two trees. Jabir said, I followed him. And I saw that he was pulling one of the tree trunks or one of the branches from the tree. And then he said to the tree, he spoke to the tree. He said to it, follow me by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, and therefore the tree began to pull itself out from the soil, obeying him, following him like the animal that is obedient to its master. 
holding the hand of a tree and walking with it till he got to the other side of the valley. He got to the other side of the valley, he took one of the tree trunks, one of the branches from the tree, he pulled it, he said, follow me by the permission of Allah. It began to follow him. Now he is walking in the middle of the valley with two trees behind him. And then he got to the middle of the valley and then he said, cover me by the permission of Allah. So they began to cover him, the leaves and the branches till he was non-visible. Jabir, he said, I realized that I was looking. So I quickly gave him my back and I began to play with some stones, waiting for him to finish. And then I looked back at some point and I saw him walking towards me. He had relieved himself and the two trees had returned back to the two ends of the valley. La ilaha illallah. Love that caused trees to move from their places. And that wouldn't be the first nor the last time that this would happen. Ya'la ibn Murrah, another companion, he said three things I will never forget seeing in front of me happening with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said one of them was a day when we were traveling with him Alaihi Salatu Wasallam and then he was resting to camp and when he was asleep a tree got up from its place and began to move pulling itself out from the soil, ripping the roots out from the earth and walking as if it was a human being till it got to right in front of him and then it covered him. He was asleep, alayhi salatu wassalam. And then the tree removed itself and went back to its place. When he woke up, alayhi salatu wassalam, Ya'l ibn Murra, he said to the Prophet sallallahu when you were asleep, you won't believe what happened. X, Y, and Z happened. He said to me, yeah, this is not strange. He said, this was a tree that sought permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give salam to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so Allah gave it permission. A tree is yearning to give salam to the Prophet of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam. So how can we become stingy brothers and sisters and not say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. Love that caused animals to weep upon seeing his radiant face alayhi salatu wasalam. Imam Abu Dawood narrates on the authority of Jabir that the Messenger وسلم, once entered the garden of a man from the Ansar who owned camels. And the moment the camel saw the face of the Habib وسلم, it began to weep. And so he made his way to the camel and he began to pass his hand over its temple until it relaxed and settled. Then he turned to the companions. He said, who is the owner of this camel? One of the men from the Ansar, he said, it's mine, O Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he gave him an earful. He said to him, will you not fear Allah with regards to this camel, which Allah Almighty has placed under your possession? The camel just complained to me that you are making him go hungry and you're giving him too many tasks. Subhanallah. And finally, we said this was a love that humbled lions and caused them to stop in their tracks. You have a companion nicknamed Safina. He is the one who's about to narrate the hadith that you're going to hear now. He narrates that he was once traveling by sea. And then I had a disrepair in the ship. It broke. I was on the verge of drowning. I was holding on to one of the planks till it took me to the edge of a coast. It was a jungle. I got onto my feet and no sooner had I raised my head that I could now see a lion pelting towards me. Finished, game over. This is his jannah. So what is he going to say? He's going to remember Allah Jalla Jalaluhu and then his beloved Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He will say, Ya Abu Al-Harith, father of Harith. This is one of the names of the lion in the Arabic language. So he said, Abu Al-Harith, Ana Safina, Mawla Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Abu Al-Harith, lion, I am Safina, the servant of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Subhanallah, the lion stopped in his tracks. He said, and then it approached me very gently and it began to nudge me with its shoulder. I took the impression that it wanted me to go somewhere. I was lost. So there I am being pushed by the lion gently. It helped me find the way out of the jungle. And then it began to make very gentle noises as if to say, which my interpretation, he said, led me to believe it was bidding me farewell. What did he say to Abu Harith? I am Safina, servant of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is recognized in the animal world. La ilaha illallah. Didn't we say that his love was unconditional and loved by the universe as well? By the inanimate objects? What then about you, dear brother, dear sister? What type of love should we feel towards him? 